Well, it's your Auntie Kay here. Let's play some Stardew Valley. So I've been thinking about this for a while. I like to play The Sims 2. Oh, I thought we were skipping the intro. Let's see what happens here. So we have Anna. I've generated her randomly. Her grandfather doesn't look so good. He wants us to have an envelope. That's very sweet. Thank you. Don't open it yet. Have patience. Now listen close. <laughs> there will come a day when you feel crushed by the burden of modern life. I can relate. Guess there's a reason why I like this game. Your bright spirit will fade before a growing emptiness. My emptiness is thirst. Just drinking some water. When that happens, my dear, you'll be ready for this gift. Now let Grandpa rest. Some years later, here we are working at Joja. I say we, Anna. We, you, I. People. Video cameras watching everybody work. That doesn't look so great. Terminated. Oh, this guy looks happy. Oh, he's taking pills. That's not so great. <laughs> Shaking. Oh, there's Anna. I recognize her blue hair. Oh, sad. I think she remembers the letter. Yes. Telling her about the farm. I think he left her or has been sitting empty. Oh, sorry, I had to click on the letter. You must be in dire need of a change. Well, Grandpa, we are going to go to the farm. So, I play a lot of Sims 2, and there are a lot of challenges that people play. There's one I've been working on for four years now, the Build a City Challenge. Uh, the game doesn't tell me how many hours I've played, unlike Stardew Valley, um, but it's a lot, I'm sure. And so I started thinking about a Stardew Valley speedrun, but it's not really a speedrun I'm thinking of at all. There's definitely people who do that, and they do some pretty impressive things. We have arrived with our bus. <clears throat> okay. What are we going to do? Oh, there's a box. Parsnip seeds. Well, let's head outside. Hmm. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Now, I don't think it's going to work so well to have me talking and the music on. There, let's do that. No footsteps. <laughs> okay, well, let's find a parsnip. And? Let's go meet some people. <laughs> a little bit of a path to the entrance here. Do -do -do. Hmm, see some daffodils. No, dandelions. We'll come back to those later. Okay, go straight ahead. We get to the town square. Anyone hanging around? Oh, what's this? It's a calendar. First day of spring, year one. No help wanted today. Oops. Let's see who we can find. Some houses here. Oh, there's a. That's a, definitely a daffodil. 
Oh, hey. Oops, no, I don't want to chop him. I want to talk to him. There we go. <laughs> okay, not so friendly, but that's fine. Oh, we could talk to them. We're just, it is a little early, 8 a.m. We know. Three people. Oh, yes, because we met Robin. We met Shane. And I suppose we've met Lewis. And there's the bridge to the beach. If anyone's there. There's a nice little hut. There's a beach. A bit of seafood, but we only have room for 10 things right now, so I don't want to load up our, our objects. Nine o'clock. Let's see who we can find. There's Mary Lewis's house. Good morning. First night in the cottage was good, thank you. It's better than camping. I mean, people camp all the time. There's Marnie. Hi, Marnie. Gotta put down this axe and stop chopping people. Right. Hi, Marnie. Marnie runs the livestock store. We can buy animals from her. She's a nice baby. There's Gus. Runs the saloon. He's a good chef. And there's Pierre, who runs the store. Hey, yes, it's Miss Anna. Miss Anna. We could buy some seeds. We have 500. Geez, whatever that is. Parsnip, bean. I'm going to buy a cauliflower. Cauliflower seeds is what I mean when I'll buy no cauliflower. Yeah, you don't need to hold it over your head, Anna. Now, let's see. Haley and Emily's house. It's 9, 9 a.m. They might be open. Opening around. Going to, oh, hey, there's Penny. Oh, you look kind of sad, Penny. Hi, Penny. I guess she doesn't really feel like talking. There's Haley. <laughs> yes, that new farmer girl or whatever. Yes, Haley. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> you might be pretty without those horrendous clothes. Uh, thank you, I think. Guess we're not going to meet Emily today. She might be. I think she's probably in her room. She tends to be in there a lot working on her sewing. You can see her sewing machine and and things. Oh, there's Leah. Hi, Leah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Yes, the spring is lovely. I agree. Looking forward to exploring. We have here Vincent. Hi, Vincent. Yes. I am okay, but yes, you're also quite right that you probably shouldn't talk to someone. <laughs> Jody says we're not quite what she imagined. It's a quiet little town. Yeah, a farmer could. I don't actually see how a farmer could change things, but hey, we will do our best to be a good neighbor. Kent is away at war. Sam is, it's the middle of the day. Sam's probably out doing something. Who else can we meet? We stopped at Lewis's. We met Penny. We could head up towards Robin's since we met her. We meet Clint. Let's see if Pam is home. Nope. Here's Alex. Hey, Alex. Let's see if we can go ahead. Oops. Hey, Evelyn. Okay. 
Yes, I will call you Granny. Thank you. That seems really sweet. And I'll get out of your way. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's introduce ourselves to George. Eh, I don't find it too irritating, but anyway. It's going to be a little much after a while. Oh, sounds busy. Sam? Alex, I mean Alex. He's busy with his weights, so we'll leave him alone. Oh, we haven't met Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. I'm not some new farmer. Yes, your store, your uh, husband Pierre runs the general store. And your daughter is Abigail, the pale one with the purple hair. Her words. Let's head north here. Ooh, there's a nice daffodil. Maru. Hi. Yes, I did just move in. Looking forward to getting to know you too. Yeah, only 28 people in this town? Yeah, she's right. Maybe one could alter the dynamic. Here's Robin's house. Robin? Yeah, it's a beautiful day for a walk. No, I haven't met everyone yet. How many people have we met? 15. More than half. I'm doing well. And we're going to make it 16 with Demetrius. Hello, Demetrius. Scientist and father. Yes, we did meet Maru. Sebastian's probably downstairs working, so we won't meet him, but I bet we can find Linus. He lives around here and he's often nearby. Hmm, a leak. Maybe up near his tent. Oh, there he is. Hi, Linus. Nice to meet you. <laughs> a stranger, yes, I'm sorry. Yep, lives out here alone. Mm -hmm. Let's go back home. The way we came through town. We can stop at the saloon and see if there's anyone else there we haven't met yet. This game kind of resonates with me because I was born in a little town in northern Ontario. Not really north. Oh, we haven't met Abigail yet. Hi, Abigail. Yes, Pierre and Carolyn's daughter. Well, well it's going to take me quite a while to clear those overgrown fields, so I think you can look forward to many more days of hanging out in them. Oh, there's Alex. Oh, nice to meet you. The new girl. Yep. See you around. So, hello, Gus. We've met already, but we haven't met Emily. She's Haley's sister. She works at the saloon, so you can find her here pretty much every night. Uh, Clint will be in later. We might be able to meet him on his way over. Lewis, we've already met. Yeah, I was born in a little town, not northern Ontario, like Cochrane, say, where there's no roads north of there, but not Halliburton either. If you're familiar with paper maps, I was born on the other side of the map, but only just on the other side. But I lived in Toronto for many, many years. Hey, there's Sam. Did we meet Sam? I don't think we did. Hey. Ooh, hey, hey, hey. You're getting away. No, I don't care about the radio. Ooh, Vincent's report card. Oh dear. No, okay. Failed there. That's it. Yeah, 10 years or so, I moved back to the farm. Not the same one I grew up on, because that was long gone out of the family, but another one. That's where I am right now. Got this brand new two-screen setup, which is pretty exciting because I can have Stardew Valley on one monitor and my timer and the software on the other to run this recording that I'm doing. 
Let's water this cauliflower. And I think we're gonna chop some wood. You never know, that might come in handy. And along the way, we're probably gonna get some fiber and rocks too, because things are kind of messed up around here. You got can't get to one without going through the other. But I don't wanna we look at those ten inventory spots. I don't want to use them up yet. Unfortunately, parsnips only take four days to grow. There's a pet bull there. What? What's going on there? Yeah, so I've got my dual screen set up, like I say. Feeling good today. I've got everyone's fed. I've got the house to myself. I've got a glass, a cup of tea, and a bottle of water. It's dark already. Man, the day goes fast. And I guess I thought I might come talk to my invisible imaginary friends on the internet, which is you. I don't know who you are. I don't know why I'm talking to you. If I'm lonely, I should know by now the internet is probably the worst place to look for companionship and people to make you feel good about yourself. But I just love this game and I like to share things with people. So I hope I hope you might enjoy it. <laughs> I don't quite see why you would rather watch me play than play yourself, but I gather it's a thing that people do, so here we go. Uh, and I want to tell you about this challenge, which I haven't done yet. So it's not a speed run, like I say. It's more like a Sims 2 challenge, where my goal is to uh, do everything in the game. Every achievement, every... Um, you know, everything you can buy, borrow, not borrow, buy, grow, raise, every one of the little stars that pops up and say, congratulations, you made a new achievement. Um, everything that can be done. So we'll, we'll generate a list of that as we go along. And the goal is to do it in as few played hours as possible. And I think that'll be the criteria, is the number of hours that it shows when you uh, are on the loading screen uh, seeing how many hours of the gameplay there are. We could do it in elapsed time. I'm going to play in 30 minute chunks because that's what I do. I need to get up and stretch every 30 minutes. So I've set a timer and when it goes off, I will be very abruptly saying, okay, bye. We could also do it. So elapsed time, game time, we could also do it time in the game. So we're on day one of year one right now, but um, I don't know. I feel like a, uh, the game time play is probably uh, the correct way to go, but yeah, we can keep track of all three. Okay. Maybe there could be some complicated scoring system. Uh, oops. Oh yeah, we can't break this log yet. We're going to need a stronger axe. I wonder how we could possibly get that. Of course I know the answer to these questions, but it's more fun if I pretend I don't. I would like to get 50 pieces of wood. We're getting tired, but not too tired. I think one thing I love about this game is that as long as you are in bed by 2, you will wake up in the morning at 6 a.m. every day, perfectly refreshed with your energy level at 100. So I kind of ignore this thing that says it's getting late. Like Kind of like when I was a kid, my mom would say, it's getting late, okay. I'd be like, no, I'm not tired. But now I'm an adult and I am tired. And I need eight or nine hours of sleep a night because I'm sick. So I like the fact that in this game, I can get away with four hours of sleep. It's amazing. But when your exhaustion starts getting low and it gets to be 1 a.m., you do want to at least know where your front door is. Yes, and I have not been paying very good attention. At least the monsters are going to come out. Oh, there's the greenhouse. It's, uh, it's kind of in pieces right now, but you can kind of see what it was. We're going to have to clear some weeds here to get back to our front door. That's okay, we can do that. I love how the game, like, 
automatically gives you the size or the we're running out of time here or whatever you need but we are gonna make it just in time 140 go to sleep yes okay that's day one now for day two huh, let's see what's on the tv the weather report well tomorrow we don't care oh it's gonna rain interesting today good humor a little extra luck well i can always use a little luck let's start a fire because it is early in the spring and it might be a little chilly it doesn't use up any of our wood or anything it's going to rain tomorrow but it's not raining today so let's water our poor little seedlings here oh really hmm. Got our parsnip underway. We still have eight people to meet, and we're gonna go to the beach. Let's go to 50 pieces of wood, and I'll tell you why. It's because we already know how to build a chest to put our stuff in. And um, every game I play is an inventory management game, whether it's supposed to or not. Uh, in the games, as in life, I find it very hard to get rid of things, throw them away, sell them give them away, whatever. I just have a hard time getting rid of stuff. I always think this could come in handy someday. Perhaps it's partly the influence of my grandparents who all were alive and kids during the Great Depression. My uh, grandfather, grandmother, one of them, my mom's parents, one of them told me about taking, uh, getting made fun of at school when they were a kid because they took potato sandwiches to school and it was just bread which was homemade because your mom made the bread that was just how it worked back then and there at that place and time and there'd be slices of cold potato and if you were lucky there was a smear of i'm not kidding you lard uh, butter if they had it was sold at the market garden uh, lard was much more available and much cheaper all right, we've got our 50 pieces of wood. Let's head back to my front step. I'm gonna have to lay down some paths just so I know <laughs> where we're going. Otherwise, I'm gonna waste some time. All right, right next to the house, I think would be a good place. Perhaps game play time is not the best since I apparently futz around and don't know where to put things. And I'm probably going to end up doing things like building paths, which are going to take time that we maybe don't have. Ooh, some extra seeds. I'm going to hold on to those extra parsnip seeds for a little while because I want to make sure we know what we're doing in terms of growing before we uh, invest too heavily but mixed seeds, that sounds interesting. Now, let's go to the beach. Let's meet Willy. And now that we have a chest, we can indulge in a little foraging as we go. Here's some dandelions. Good for you. Greens. I don't know, vitamins, whatever, <laughs> in dandelions. Where I live, they're mostly just a weed, and people are only just starting to come around to the idea of eating them. Once or twice I've seen them in the grocery store, which I find hilarious. Why would I buy them at the grocery store when they're all over my yard? I'm going to skip that. Willie's back from his fishing trip. He gave us a bamboo pole. Let's see how this works, shall we? Let's see if we can catch anything. I do find fishing a little tedious at the beginning, especially. You just have to do it and then you get better at it, like a lot of things in life, right? It'd be nice to be good at it right off the bat, but that's what practice is for. I think I might need to, I need to turn down the Yes, the ambient volume, that'll be better. 
Yeah, in life as well, I'm not a big fan of fishing. Just uh, too much sitting and waiting. Not, not something I'm good at, really. Although I guess maybe sometimes it's more about the company and the camaraderie when people go fishing. Oh, now this will be a lot easier later when we're better at it and we have a better fishing pole and better tackle, but hey, an anchovy, our very first fish. Did Willie really give us a... No, he didn't give us a uh, challenge or anything. We're just learning how to fish here. Four more minutes and then I'm going to go have lunch. So I live on a farm, like I say, but I'm not a farmer. We just live in the house. It's a beef farm, cattle farm. The cows just went to their summer pasture yesterday. So there's just a couple uh, older cows left in the field outside my window here. It's pretty exciting. They all get loaded up in the trailer and they have to go in several batches and they get all excited and they moo and everything. It's pretty funny. Oops. So there's a farmer who owns the land and takes care of all of that. So he grows the feed for the animals, takes care of them. So all I have to do is enjoy them. And I still get to live on a farm. Nice and peaceful. I really like it. When I was born, like I say, it was a little town. My parents had a little house, but they had also bought a farm again. Uh, There's quite the theme here today about farms. And uh, when I was three and my brother was two, I have a little brother, they, the way I heard the story was they got an offer they couldn't refuse on their house in town. Uh, it was a mining town and um, business was booming back in the 70s. So they sold their house in town and they moved to their cottage, sort of, which was a farm. Not a working farm. It had been sitting empty for quite a while. Lots of weeds, lots of trees, 100 acres, 60 acres at least of it was trees. Uh, and it was a log cabin, an honest to goodness, made of logs that were cut down, laid on top of each other, cut at the corners, chinked with, I don't know what, moss, concrete, <laughs> newspaper. Uh, and there was no indoor plumbing. There was an outhouse, but no bathroom or toilet or tub. There was a sauna that was almost as big as the house because it was a Finn farmhouse. And the joke around there was that they built the sauna first and then the house. Because you have to have a sauna at the end of a long day of building a house. So my dad had to put a bathroom in and there they were with a three-year-old and a two-year-old still in diapers. Uh, no bathroom, no tub. Outhouse. I don't know how my mother potty trained us in an outhouse. And the well water used to run dry in the springs. So I remember my dad going out. It was a dug well, so it was not very deep and shallow. Uh, yeah, not very deep and shallow. That's the same thing. Sorry. And he would go out and he would check the level of the water even after we had the indoor plumbing. And he would tell us whether we were allowed to flush the toilet that day or we had to use the outhouse and uh, only flush the toilet at the end of the day once. So that's my strange story about where I grew up and we have caught four fish while I've been talking so that's nice and we have less than a minute to go so I'm going to say adieu oh dear Anna's getting exhausted so we're gonna have to do something about that next time but for now I'm going to uh, make her eat a dandelion just to keep her happy for a little while and I don't know maybe I'll see you tomorrow maybe the next day next time I have the house to myself we wave goodbye Anna no, I don't think she can. And uh, so, yeah, this is Auntie Kay saying goodbye for now. Have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. Have a good month. And hopefully I'll see you again. Bye.